What the hell did you do to your car? It's a brand new BMW. They come like that from the factory. No, they, but you drew hearts all over I it. I did not. They come like that. They do, but that's done, that's painted with love. Uh, yes, it is painted with love. I'm trying to bring more love into the world, okay? Do you have a problem with love? No, no. Are we going to do this or not? Did you bring the stuff? The, the stuff? The drugs? Yes, it's 100% drugs. Yes, the drugs? Yes, it's... I brought the drugs yes. for you to have. Yes, did you, they are drugs though? You're confirming that? Well, they're not a bomb. What was, what was that? Why are you saying it's drugs I'm, I'm, into... I have a... Itch? I have psoriasis. You have psoriasis. Chron chronic psoriasis. You never told. How did I not know you ever had? I don't psoriasis. tell you everything. Why, wait, wait. Did you say bomb? Why would it be a bomb? Wait, 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 what do you? What do you give me? The third degree? What are you a cop? You're asking me about love and my my condition. I would like the drugs now. Are the Stand. drugs for your it, for the itch? It's very personal. You know I'm self conscious okay, right, about no, look, that. Uh, look, give my regards to President Kardashian. Via con Dios. But where are you? Car Brushwood. Since day one of the modern rogue. Blow what? up a car! I know. Yes, the first thing on the list. The modern rogue would know blow up a car! How to blow up a car movie style. Yes! But we need an expert to teach us. Did someone say blow up a car? <gasps> Stunt scientist Steve Wolf! Steve Wolf, thank you so much for joining Brian, us, man. Jason, thank you. Now, we have always wanted to blow up a car, but I assume there's a process and things that we need. What do we need? You need a car, you need someone who knows how to blow it up safely, and you need some exciting chemistry. Now the car thing we got taken care of from our friends over at Dash Hub. They monitor a gazillion auctions in order to get pre-owned and salvage titled vehicles. They got an inventory of like 100,000 plus. They were cool enough to set us up with a BMW, like an 03. 325XI, yeah, whatever so, that means. Yeah, exactly, sounds fancy uh, for the moment. We're gonna blow it up. So what do you have to do to the car First. Well, first thing, we want to make sure that when we blow up the car, one, we don't actually want any fragmentation. So we're not using the same type of high kinetic energy devices that you'd use to cause destruction, because we're just trying to create the look of an explosion. So we're going to remove everything from the car that could burn. We don't want any vinyl burning, anything like that. We only want the things to burn that we put in the car that are intended to burn. We're gonna get a crew in here and we're gonna strip everything flammable out of here, basically take this thing down to the metal. So it's basically minimalizing the possibility for a dangerous mess. Right, we don't want any dangerous mess. We don't want any poisonous crap in the air. We're gonna pull everything out of here. And then we actually saw the hinges, saw the frame posts, everything that we want to blow up we actually go ahead and pre-break it. And so that it only to take like a firecracker to make this thing fall apart once we finish cutting it up. How long a process does it take to prep the vehicle? Well, if you and I were to do this, we could get it done probably in eight to 10 hours. But uh, I'm thinking we don't have eight to 10 hours and we do have a movie crew. Yeah, we do have a bunch of fans. Uh, I just say, hey, everybody, let's tear this thing apart. So this is uh, John Godwin here. He's our lead engineer here and he's assembled the merry band of people that you want to not be in their way when they start uh, going it, at it. Here we go, let me get my stuff out here. I don't want my phone taken this apart. This is what happens when you offer All right. free pizza. I'll be over here. Yeah. <laughs> Make one pile, John. Pick out where you want it to be. So this is all the flammable stuff coming out and including the seat. I didn't even think about the seat. Oh, yeah. You've blown up a number of cars. What happens thousands, when a car... Thousands, really. Uh, okay. You've wow. blown up thousands of I've cars. I've blown up thousands of cars. I've done... I haven't done any. I haven't done any at all. <laughs> you know, after today, you won't be able to say that anymore. What happens to these cars after they're blown up? Because I know that we saw well, a bunch of... Yeah. After these cars are blown up, they become background uh, flora and fauna for people who are playing airsoft, paintball, and they need this burnt this out amazing. wreckage look for them. This thing is dying and going to Valhalla. We're going we're gonna to set fire to its pyre. And then also there's people who want to do tactical shooting drills and they need vehicles to work around. Okay. So that'll all go to Stunt Ranch. So you have a number of these vehicles already on the premises. Yeah, we have a pretty good collection of them. Oh, and the nice thing is, is once it's blown up, you can blow it up over and over again, like oh, this van over, over yeah. here. That van has been blown up at least 5,000 times. So wow. do you have any horror stories of things gone wrong when stuff wasn't properly dismantled from the car? Yeah, I've seen uh, things blow up and nearly hurt crew before. The more stuff like that you see, the more paranoid you become about safety. You send me a guy who's never been part of something that went wrong, and I don't want him because he's not gonna be careful enough. Okay. I would imagine you build up like a kind of a low grade paranoia at all times. You do, right. You know, you can do this safely if you apply the science, but if you don't, or if you don't respect the chemistry, you're gonna get hurt or hurt somebody else. Yeah, no kidding.
You ready? One, two, three. There we Whoa, go. Oh, isn't that satisfying? There we go. One, two, three. Boy, it's really weird to just treat it like, like such garbage. Breaker. Well, I broke the, <laughs> the crowbar. <laughs> yeah! Hey! There we go. Nice. Got it. Yeah, maybe we should. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll uh, yeah, I'll bet. Oh, right on. We, what is it we need out of the hood? Oh, there you go. Nicely done, sir. All right, for the record, that was... It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And we had a big team, and that still took two and a half hours or so. And yeah. it's all for safety, right? So right. we're not going to have, like, bits of this shrapnel flying off? We don't want anything flying out. We don't want anything on fire that doesn't need to be. We don't want the headliner burning, the urethane foam, and all that stuff creating pollution. Now, with this chassis, though, we're not going to have, like, bits of molten, jagged metal flying out? I hope not. <laughs> But remember, disagree. remember, distance is always your friend when it comes to pyrotechnics and explosives. If you can see it, it can see you. Oh God, it's sentient? <laughs> it's, it, it might be. It knows our fear. It, it'll always be the person on the crew who is most paranoid who ends up getting hit with something. That's you. Uh, bring yeah. it to themselves. That's right. So we've got everything stripped. Describe for me the Rube Goldberg scenario of how we get flammable liquid exploding everywhere. All right, so basically liquids don't burn, only gases burn. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have to do is we have to turn the liquids into gases. And the way we're gonna do that is just by shock them with a, a high brisant charge. And that'll create a, what, yeah. a, a fuel air it's mixture? It's gonna atomize it, right? Okay. So we're, when wanted. we do alchemy. Yeah, and we're gonna do some of that. <laughs> but no alchemy before we work. That's right. right. Texas doesn't sell Philosopher's Stones on Sunday anyway. So. <laughs> Not before noon anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this this charge here, we're gonna put it under the liquid, we're gonna use that to push the liquid up and turn it into a vapor, uh -huh. and then that vapor can combine with oxygen, at which point it's highly flammable, and off it goes. Okay, so you've got the, the bunch of gas, you've got the, the gizmo that, that explodes and, and throws everything up. How do you trigger that gizmo remotely? So we're just gonna trigger that with electricity. We've got a piece of wire that runs from the car off to a safe distance. We add electricity, Who's, are, are, and we get, we, we, it all we Call dibs. Uh, yeah, are we gonna right. do this together? Yeah. One on each You'll side. You'll each get one wire. There we go. Yeah! Oh, that would be amazing. High five. I'm <laughs> excited. <laughs> the battery. Tell me more about the gizmo. Okay, so the the gizmo is a, a flammable powder. When the powder burns, it turns into a gas. That gas creates a lot of pressure. That pressure pushes up against the liquid, and that atomizes the and liquid. And that's part of the reason we have that uh, that metal pipe there, is because essentially it's like a short barrel shotgun. It's just going to blast everything right. up. Right. So we're going to have a, a couple of different charges in here. Uh, the first one, we want to push vapor up against the roof here, and then it's going to mushroom out and come out the windows and go around. And then the second charge is going to be in the trunk. And in the trunk charge, we just want it to kind of pop the trunk up and, and see fire come out oh, the and back. Now this one, it's just laying there. It's not even in a yeah, pipe thing. That's I, right. Because I assume all of this is a vessel that's going to fill with explosive force. It, it, it's all going to fill with gases. So anyone who wants to know what the powders are and what the liquids are, they could come to Pyro School. We have a Pyro licensing program. So people who decide after seeing this, like, that's what I want to do for a living. Uh, they could come here and take some training and we could actually show them how to do this yeah. and get them licensed so they could be safe. The mechanisms to do this seem very, very simple. Like anyone could do it, but right. I want to emphasize more than I have in any other episode, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you come here it's, this and is talk to like super dangerous. Team. And you know, the reason that we're able to make it look easy is because we've been doing it for 30 years. But if you were to go off and try to experiment with this on yourself, there'd be at least 10 different opportunities to blow yourself up. And I've over the years seen all the different ways that these can be triggered with, you know, RF and remote control and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and Hi-Fi and everything else. I have an and, app. And, yeah, Actually. an app. What I've found over the years is the simpler you make your science, the more reliable it is. 
I don't even use switches. At this point, I just take my wires and I touch it to the battery. One less thing to go wrong. So out of everything that we did to set up, you said that there was one thing that was more important than all of it put together, and that's right. to keep it from accidentally discharging. The most important thing that we do here today is called shunting. And shunting is when you take two wires and twist them together. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take the two lead wires that are hooked up to everything else in here, and we twist them together to make sure that static electricity can't get in there, that if it's dragged along the ground and accidentally finds an old nine volt battery that someone discarded, electricity can't get in there. It's a closed circuit right now. So and it really way... could be the, the kind of thing where if it, they're not shunted and, and just the act of dragging the wire could generate enough energy that you grab it, you touch the two parts and it blows up. Right. So All of a sudden, I just realized we're sitting do it against that. We're, yeah, we're right here. Mm, so uh -huh. because it's shunted, it's safe and it won't go off until we want it to. We have to undo that short circuit and then touch that to our our battery. Man, I think we're set. I guess we just need to get the shot of you getting into the car so you could get exploded. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. It's a good way good to luck. die. Good luck. It's been fun working with you <laughs> in case anything happens. It's a good day. I've, I've, I've had a good run. I've had a good run. All right, ready? Yes, are we doing fine? Yeah, just take it. Just take it. Be like, it's fine. Vaya con Dios. Brushwood. All right, we're gonna load this thing. All right, make yourself scarce, sir. Right. Neatly done, right? Steve just put the flammable liquid into About the About a gallon the tube. of it, just right on top of the explosive charge. So the explosive charge is gonna throw everything up and we get to cause it. And it'll turn to vapor uh, and then we detonate it with a detonator. Yeah. I've always wanted to use a detonator. It's high tech too. It's two pieces of wire that we stick to a battery. Cause I'm a modern rogue. <laughs> is it go time, Steve? Go. Really? Yeah. Don't you dare. It's the most, he said it's the most important thing. I got it. And you're like, but I want to untwist it. I, it's, I want to unshunt. Yeah, don't unshunt. They don't have any fire be gone. They, <laughs> it's because they're professionals, man. <laughs> Give a nice loud count out. Roger that. We're about to blow up the car. All right, hold on, you're unshunting? Should I unshunt now? Unshunt and then hand each of us a wire. And then call out, fire in the hole three and make sure there's no cars. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Wow! <laughs> wow! Jackpot! We made a big thing go boom! <laughs> yeah! Whoa! That's amazing! I was in that car! Yeah, you died! Just like a second ago! You were not alive anymore! You finally got your wish. I tricked you! It was a bomb! It wasn't drugs at <laughs> it all! It wasn't drugs at all! Alright, now's bomb our moment! Brush no, wood. no! <laughs> Holy cow! That was perfect, guys! We, uh... You're never really ready for it. There we go, we're out. Beautifully done. Wow, man. Alright, we got a flare back up. So there's yeah, a lot of hot gas get rid of that out. ignition source down there. Here we go. So when I pop that, it may it may relight. You will cool that out. Look out! Woo! The stuff on the ground is okay as long as it doesn't relight the car. Wow! Look at that. That's that's just straight it's up fun. gas leaking. It's fun. That's straight up gas leaking out of the gas tank. That's every cliche. That's the beginning of of, of Mad Max. <laughs> uh, we got a little fire under the bumper here. Oh yeah! Look at that. That's how we do. Absolutely, man. That came out great. <laughs> and there was no shrapnel Nothing, that I saw. Right? There was no debris that and blew thanks, loose. Thanks to John and his crew. Yeah. You know, a super clean extinguish. Great job, That's what guys. you're shooting for. Yeah, that's good. All right, dude, I'm no expert, but that looked like it blowed up real good. I'm going to have to take your word for it, because, of course, I didn't watch. Yeah, because oh. cool guys don't look at explosions, of yeah. course. Yeah. Textbook <laughs> I read. Yeah. But if you guys say it looked good, I'm happy. We bounced up and down and looked like a couple of chimpanzees. But did, <laughs> I, did any of you yell, wow, wow? A little, little bit. A little bit. I'm not going to ask who. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right, so well, where can we get so much more of your amazing work? So you can check this out at stuntscience.tv. I've actually got much more detailed instructions on how to do this for people who are interested in the process. Great. And, of course, this all happens out at Stunt Ranch. It's what we do. You're the best, Steve. Thanks so Amazing. much, man. Thanks so much for coming Absolutely. out, Brian. Jason, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Come sir. back soon. Indeed. 
I thought there was going to be some sort of voodoo science going on here with uh, a mysterious device and some sort of forbidden explosives you get from a man in an alley. And Yeah, there is voodoo science. It's in the expertise of knowing exactly how far is the safe area, exactly how the fuel is going to spray everywhere, exactly how to think about ventilation and stuff. Turns out it's basic physics, right? Explodey thing, kind of like a shotgun shell, just explodey thing goes off, propulsion causes the flammable liquid to go everywhere, and the fuel air mixture just goes nuts. It was big. It was loud. It was something. It was very impressive. Uh, bucket list, right? Oh, yeah, no, cross that way. I'm this much closer to death now. Oh, yes. I think we all saw the Grim Reaper waiting like, how is Brian going to injure his hand today? Not today, Satan! Maybe he loses it entirely. <laughs> so uh, we've got to thank our friends over at Dashhub.com, right? Yes, yes. If you are looking for affordable, reliable transportation, Dashhub.com can hook you up. Or unreliable transportation. If you just need, like, say, a BMW to blow up. I mean, I guess you could borrow this one. You could. But you yeah. could also go to Dashhub.com. Yes, get your own. Hey, uh, is your butt as hot as my butt uh, is? This car was just on fire, so yeah. yeah no, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that. burning. Uh. Is that, is that, wait, is that a new theme song? Yes, yes it is. Okay, so you're saying explosion happens, and then it shows me and Jason, and then we hear what? Cause I'm a modern rogue. I feel like you gotta belt it out. Give it, give it to me big and slow. Cause I'm a modern rogue. Yep, beautiful. Cut, print, we're good.